welcome to Hilda's Smothered Chicken. For those of you who do not know me, I am Sora Angela Ray, and I am going to be recreating my aunt's famous Southern Smothered Fried Chicken recipe. Over the years, I have adapted it and added my own ingredients, but let's get started. So what you'll need is some basic seasonings for your chicken. Uh, whether that's black pepper, garlic salt I use sometimes, garlic powder if I don't want too much salt inside. Gotta have a little bit of paprika for color, but I will go ahead and tell you. Today, I went ahead and cheated a little bit, skipped all of this, and I am using Slap Your Mama's Cajun Seasoning. So that is what you'll need to get started. Also, your favorite cooking oil. I tend to be a little partial to canola oil, and whatever you'd like to fry your chicken in if you're gonna fry. Uh, I use flour, uh, some people use panko breadcrumbs, um, everything from cornflakes, egg wash to go ahead and make sure you have that nice crisp batter but get all of your ingredients ready your oil your batter and your seasonings and of course your favorite piece of chicken i'm a little bit of partial to the chicken wing because that's what i like and we're gonna go ahead and head over to the stove so we are getting everything ready on the front part of the stove you see i have a pot of rice for my rice, I love to use homemade broth. Uh, today, I have reserved some broth for some oxtails I cooked a couple of days ago, so that's what I'm using for my rice. In the back pan, you see butter. I'm getting ready to make that roux for the gravy. And of course, on the front part, right here, the front part, front pot, we have our oil for the chicken. Now, in terms of how hot you want it, I always saw my grandmother do that. And so when that grease starts to fizzle, you know it's time for the chicken to drop. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop my chicken wings inside the grease. Oh yeah, that grease is ready. Not too hot. Um, I'll probably adjust the temperature just a bit because we don't want burnt wings. We're just gonna let them do what they do. I think I do wanna turn that up just a bit. And again, we'll start to make everything for our gravy uh, a little bit later when it's closer to time for those wings to come out. As you can see, the chicken wings are coming out to a nice golden brown. They're not quite ready yet, uh, but I definitely love the color that they have right now. So the chicken is done, it's a nice golden brown. I like to let it rest a bit on the paper towel so that it catches all the extra oil. Don't want extra oil inside of my gravy. But yes, the chicken is done. So now it's time to check on our rice and then also get ready to make our gravy. And I have a blend of butter and oil because I love my gravy extra rich. And uh, so I'm gonna be putting the flour in there. We're gonna get it nice and brown. And uh, let's get to work. Cause I hear it popping, so it's just about, it's ready. We're looking ready for that flour. So go ahead and drop in there. So here we go. I think that that is probably enough. So we wanna go ahead and start mixing it up. Again, I have used a butter and oil mix. My oil of choice most of the time is canola oil in terms of heavy, uh, hot heat cooking, followed by avocado oil. Didn't have any avocado oil today, so we're using canola oil. And so I'm just gonna keep whisking this around very quickly until it starts to get the color that I like. And right now it's a long way away from the color that I like. I mentioned for my rice that I use some leftover oxtail broth. Anytime I cook meat, whether I am baking chicken, uh, I may be boiling some meat, I always save uh, the water or the broth or the reserve, however you wanna call it, uh, because it has so much flavor in it and you can use it for a variety of things, rice, mashed potatoes, beans, stews, and yes, your gravy. So yeah, we're just gonna keep stirring this around. Oh. Why didn't y'all tell me that I turned the, the fire off, but we're just gonna keep stirring, stirring, stirring. I get this nice and brown. We're gonna stop for a second. 
let the heat catch back up to it. So whenever I get ready to make the gravy, I'm gonna add a little bit of water to stop the browning process. And then I will add that leftover oxtail broth. It's gonna give it a lot of flavor. Um, also for your gravy, that all of that together is plenty of flavor, plenty of flavor. But I'll probably add a few onions because that's what I like. And maybe even some mushrooms. So I think it's ready for me to start Stirring it back again. It's starting to get a little bit of color to it. I personally don't care for a blonde gravy. I really like mine. I'll very golden brown and so we're starting to get some color of course you definitely want to continue stirring very vigorously and often because it will definitely start to stick and it's almost there almost there for my liking again you'll you'll add your water or your broth whenever uh, the roux reaches the color that you like and like I said we're almost there we're getting brown we're getting brown we're getting brown she's doing a little something something as my grandmother would say I'm really cooking with grease now because it's definitely about the color that I like I'm gonna take it off the stove because I don't want it to cook anymore so you can see that beautiful color beautiful to me add a little water and this is the process that you kind of have to play by ear because you want it to be a certain thickness and I'm not trying to make another roux so I'll add a little bit along the way. This is very, very thick, so we can add a little bit more water to it. And now, of course, it's time to really add the yummy flavor of the oxtail broth. So we're gonna put it back on the stove, stirring it very, very quickly. And now I need a little bit of a dishcloth. But yeah, this is the color that I want. And now I'll just play around with it a little bit until I get it the consistency that I want and I'm ready to add my onions as well as my mushrooms. I have added my chicken wings to the gravy. And as you can see, there is a nice simmer going on there. Just wanna add a couple of pro tips for you as it pertains to your gravy. First, if you decide to use a broth, whether that's a broth you have reserved from earlier cooking or even a canned broth, be careful adding sodium or salt to the gravy. Oftentimes, if you've seasoned your meat well previously, there's plenty of salt inside that broth and you don't have to, have to add additional salt to your gravy. Also, you can still continue to play around with flavors for your gravy. I just like it a little bit punchy, so I add just a little pinch of cayenne pepper. Not enough for it to be spicy, but just enough for someone to say, watch out there now. All right, so the chicken is simmering, the rice is done, so now it's time to plate it up. And voila, our smothered fried chicken is done. I've added just a little bit of parsley on there for color. There's our rice that I cooked in the oxtail broth. Gotta have some greens on the plate and what was quick was a little bit of wilted spinach that I just did in olive oil, garlic salt, and black pepper. Of course, during the holiday season, collard greens are in season as well as turnip greens. So substitute any green that you would like on the plate, but of course, gotta have your vegetables. Well, Soares, thank you all so much for joining me for my Aunt Hilda's Southern Smothered Fried Chicken. Of course, I'm enjoying it today with some rice as well as a little spinach. Of course, you can have any green that you like. And remember, I am Angela Ray, a foodie with a fondness for fellowship and fun. Hope you enjoy it. Mmm. Now, y'all know I need some bread with this so I can, like, do some of this gravy. So don't forget the bread in your recipe. I'm about to turn it
camera off now because I can pick up this chair like I want to.